The Nehalem Bay Airport in Manzanita, Oregon, is an interesting destination that I've heard a lot about. It's co-located with a state park, so there's camping and along with other activities, uh, beach access and sometimes horseback riding available right near the field. But I've also heard that it's a difficult field to get in and out of. On the left, you can see this kind of hill. And this hill is immediately north of the city and the airport. And when winds are out of the north, I understand that there can be some extremely turbulent conditions on landing. In particular, the advice is that if winds are out of the north at more than 10 knots, that no attempt should be made uh, in general to land at Manzanita. And I haven't tried that. Uh, on this day, the winds are out of the northwest at about 5 knots. Now, coming around the hill, you come onto the, you can see the, um, actually I have the runway in sight, although uh, if you haven't been there, you're not really sure what to look for. It's on the south side, uh, south of the town by the bay. So, you know, you can do a left downwind. You can come down the beach here. And another advice I've read is to make kind of an extended downwind, which I did in this case, in order to set yourself up for a, a long final and you can get a good feel for what the wind is doing, what the wind conditions are. Although they change rapidly as you're on short final. So that's a factor to consider. Weather, of course, is also a factor. Uh, there's no weather reporting. The nearest weather reporting is uh, Tillamook, Astoria, Newport. So you want to watch out for what the weather systems are doing. It's difficult to say with the beach right there. Sometimes there can be clouds right up to the beach or fog that dissipates, or sometimes it can just sock you in. Since there's hills all around, if there was a low overcast, it would be very difficult to escape out, even if the overcast was not that low. So as you can see on the chart here, I'm doing a, a left base, you know, maybe a little bit further from the runway than you would normally uh, do such an operation, but making this approach over the river is highly recommended. Uh, generally, successful landings seem to be, you know, I, I did some reading, and this is the best I could come up with. It looks like people generally prefer to make landings on 3-3. Three, three. Uh, in fact, while I was there, somebody attempted a landing on 1-5 because the winds favored it uh, and had to go around and land it on 3-3. Three, three. The reason is there's just a lot of trees and a little bit of rising terrain just north of the field, whereas if you come in from the south here, uh, you first of all, you have an upslope, a little bit of an upslope. It's uh, elevation 10 feet at the 3-3 three, three end and elevation 30 feet at the 1-5 end, plus you have a totally unobstructed approach path. One thing to watch out for, though, is the beach is public. So there could be people uh, and animals right there on the beach, just short of the threshold. And of course, you don't want to intentionally scare anybody. As we're watching this approach, be advised that the uh, altitude indicator on the chart is incorrect. It's about 80 feet off, so that's going to go right through zero and continue on down. It's something that uh, is a little this mapping tool, something that's a work in progress that I've been working on, and it's not quite done. It gets about here, it starts to get real squirrely, and you can kind of see in the video, you know, it's left and right, there's a lot of this gusty crosswind feel to it, you know, like getting pushed from side to side, and, and they say that one of the things to really watch out for here is how close in the trees are, they don't really look like they're not very close in at all, but you get pushed side to side quite a bit, and so because of that, it can, they can be closer than you'd like. The runway is 2,300 feet long, honestly to me it, it felt longer. Uh, when I saw the airport for the first time, I said, oh, that, that's a bigger runway than I expected. Uh, it feels plenty long, it feels plenty wide, uh, again, except for the trees being kind of close in there during, while you're on the approach and really getting pushed side to side. Once you've landed and you're looking to park, there's a bit of a weird situation with the parking. The taxiway merges into the tie downs, and it was really confusing for me. And so I, I kind of asked around, and the general consensus I got is that, uh, yeah, you, you cut off here, there's the gravel, and there's um, you just saw that paved run-up pad, which most folks do not recommend using that because it gets covered in gravel, and so you end up chipping your prop. They say do a run-up at the, at the, uh, on the runway at the threshold. So anyways, you're on the gravel here, and this is the taxiway, but in addition to being the taxiway, it's also where the tie-downs are. So when you're coming in, the recommendation that uh, that I've read is actually to, uh, as you approach the tie downs, which you'll see here in a minute, to cut off into the grass, which I didn't do because I didn't know at the time, and then you know pull into the tie down. So this row of tires, these are these are the tie downs right here. So the taxiway just becomes the tie downs, and I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm 
looking at this going, what in the world? So I kind of figure, I think I know what I'm doing. Uh, actually, I, what I, I pull out and pull back in here, I end up pulling in between two of them, so not really not really the right thing at all, but um, generally that's the right idea. These are the tie downs, and yeah, you'd be over in the grass, and then you turn and pull into them, is what I'm told. And two airplanes did come while I was uh, away, and they that's what they did, so I think that's probably right. So here's on the way back out. Now, I'd avoid doing any run-up over this gravel or on that so-called run-up pad unless you have a broom and you sweep it first. But the, you know, the runway is usually pretty, usually pretty clear. Uh, I'm parting 1-5. The winds are light and variable at the surface. The wind sock, uh, you know, like I said, you get that wind off the hill and at about between 20 and 50 feet, the winds can do all sorts of things. I didn't have too much of a problem on this departure. What I did is I said I'm going to uh, try to keep it stuck to the, the pavement a little for a few extra knots and then once it lifts off I'm kind of going to do the so-called softer field takeoff. You take off to put the nose down and try to gain some speed uh, and that way I figure you know if I do hit some kind of some kind of weird lift or sink or something that uh, with a little extra speed will help me punch through that but you know I mean, it has a little bit of especially after you pass over the threshold a little wobble side to side you know, it wasn't too serious. Uh, some people say there's kind of a standing rotor at the 3-3 three, three end of the runway, and, and that might be true. Uh, definitely, uh, both on departure and on arrival, it was approaching and crossing that 3-3 three, three threshold that was really a, a challenging point. But I'm not sure if that's because of um, where it is in relation to the trees, or if it's that altitude, you know, you're right at the treetops, and that would happen anywhere along there. That could also be the case. But uh, it's a great airport, and I'm definitely going to be back. Lots of opportunities for camping. The state park's right there. Um, just be careful, watch the winds, and watch the weather. Watch the, you can see these clouds, these clouds formed while I was there, and I think the whole thing probably got socked in within another, I was only there for an hour, uh, and it when there's a quite a row of clouds coming in, so they get socked, could get socked in pretty quick, and then you could be socked in uh, all night, all the next day even. That's what, uh, that's what the TAF's showing right now, for example. So watch the weather.